Let's take a look at the CAC, the 172 final, sample final here. <coughs> Excuse me. Find the equation of the line tangent to this curve at x equal 2. So, first of all, we need to find f prime of x because the equation of the tangent line says that at some place a, which happens to be 2 in this case, is f prime, the slope, at 2, times x minus 2 plus f of 2. So the derivative of this would be 6x minus 2, and so f prime of 2 would be 12 minus 2, or 10, and f of 2 would be 4 times 3, 12 minus 2 times 2 is 4, so that would be 8. So we get f prime is 10 times x minus 2 plus f of 2, 8. Use the limit definition in your calculator to figure out, uh, determine f prime of 0.5 for this. So we're going to do f of 0 0.5 plus h minus f of 0 0.5 over h as h approaches 0. Got to find that limit. So we have uh, 0 0.5 plus h to the 0 0.5 plus h x to the x x to the x minus it at 0 0.5 to the 0 0.5 so that's the square root of a half over h and we got to find the limit as h approaches 0. Now there's when uh, when this is the power is added we can split it up but let's just put that into the calculator as is so we got parentheses 0 0.5 plus, and I'm going to use x for the h, close parenthesis, to the uh, point 0.5 plus x minus point 0.5 to the point 0.5, and that's all in parentheses because that's in the numerator, so i got to go back here and insert a parenthesis. And then I got to divide it by x. And I'm going to use my table. And I'm going to clear or delete these and try things close to 0. 0 0.01, 0 0.0001, 0 0 0.00. It looks like I'm getting. 2.17, let's try from the negative side, negative 0.01, negative 0.0001, and I'm getting the value to be 0 0.217. The position of the bob of a pendulum, that's the weight at the bottom of a swinging item, like grandfather's clock swings back and forth is given by the following equation. So it's a cosine because it repeats itself. Is given in centimeters and t in seconds. What is its velocity at 0.5 seconds? Well, this is time. This is the position and the derivative of the position is a velocity, because this is s, and the derivative of, or d, or the distance, derivative of distance is the velocity. So, 
three stays. The cosine's derivative is negative sine of what's it in there times the derivative of that, which is pi. Derivative the inside. So we have a chain rule involved here a little bit. The constant hangs around because it's times. And we want to find this at 0.5, so we find v at 0.5 or f prime of 0.5, and we get negative 3 sine of pi over 2 times pi. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. On the unit circle, pi over 2 is at the top, and the sine is 1. So we got 1 times negative 3 times pi. So we get negative 3 pi is its position. And that would be in centimeters per second. That's it's not its position, but its speed. Excuse me, we were figuring out the velocity. So it's on its way back at a speed of 3 pi or about six, uh, let's see, three, nine something centimeters per second. Okay, page two. So we just got to find the derivative, differentiate. And this is a quotient rule, which of course is the derivative of the first numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator over the denominator squared. So that's the tangent of 2x there. The derivative of the numerator is 2x plus 3 times the denominator, tangent 2x minus the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of the something times the derivative of the inside, which is a 2, times the numerator, x squared plus 3x. And it's fine to leave it there. That is the derivative. It could be simplified, but we'll, I'm going to leave it. Find the derivative of this. So now we have two things multiplied. And I'm going to look at this as x plus 1 to the 1 third times sine 2x. And to find the derivative of the pr uh, product, you do the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Derivative of the first would be 1 third x plus 1 to 1 less than 2 thirds is negative 2 thirds times the derivative of the inside, but that's just 1, so we're okay there. The derivative of the first times the second sine of 2x plus the derivative of the second, derivative of the sine is cosine of 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is 2, that's the derivative of this, times the first, and times the first, which is uh, x plus 1 to the 1 third. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Ah. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to do any simplifying on that. You can if you want. But uh, find the equation of the tangent line to this. Well, this has got some x's and y's and so we pr and some product here too. So we're going to have to do implicit differentiation because I don't want to try to solve for y or for the x because it's too messy. So the we're going to take the derivative. We're looking for dy dx. So when we take the derivative of y to the third, it's 3y squared, but the variable is not x, so we have to go dy dx plus. 
the derivative of x squared is 2x, the variable is x, so we don't have to do dy dx, equals, now we have a product, 3x times y, so the product rule, the derivative of 3x is 3 times the second one, plus the derivative of the second, derivative of y is dy dx times the first, which I'm calling 3x. I thought of this as 3x and y as the two things multiplied. Now I need to solve for dy dx. And I can do that now or just plug in the 2 and 2 and then solve for it. So if I put 2 in for the y and 2 in for the x, 2 squared is 4 times 3. I got 12 dy dx plus 2 times 2 is 4 equals 3 times 2 is 6 plus 3 times 2 is 6 dy dx. So now I have 12 dy dx and I'm going to subtract 6 dy dx from both sides. So I'm going to have 6 dy dx's equals, and I'll subtract 4 from both sides, equals 2, and dy dx equals, divide both sides by 6, 1 third. Now to find the equation of the tangent line, it's going to be L at A equal 2 is the derivative, 1 third times x minus 2 plus f of 2, which is also 2. Page 3. Water is being poured into an inverted conical tank 20 feet high and has a diameter of 30 feet. So I'm just going to mark the radius as 15 feet at a rate of cubic feet per minute. So that's dv dt is 3 feet cubed per minute. Determine the rate of change in the height so we want to know how the height is changing. So I'm going to draw the water in there. And I'm going to say the height of that is h. And the radius I'll call r. And so if I do that, that's the volume of the water. And we're supposed to do this one, h is 4 feet. But that's going to be changing, so I don't want to use the 4 yet. But I already have a relationship between V, R, and H. But i got to get, get it to just the two variables. And I want to do the height. So I want to find something for R. So I can replace it. So I'm going to do my variables. I see my similar triangles in here. So R is to 15 as h is to 20. So if I want my equation to have just h's in it, I'm going to solve for r by multiplying by 15 on both sides. So I get r is equal to 15 divided by 20 is 3 fourths h. So if I replace r squared with this squared, I'm going to have v equals 1 third pi 3 fourths h squared is going to be 9 sixteenths h squared times the other h is going to make h cubed. Now I can take the derivative with respect to time and dv dt 
is going to be, let's see, 3 will reduce that to a 3. This is all constant, so it's going to be 3 pi over 16 times 3h squared dh, taking the derivative of the inside chain rule with respect to time, dh dt. So, they told me that dv dt, the rate that which water is being put in is, um, was it water? Yeah. Was at a, a rate of uh, three cubic feet per minute. equals th uh, 3 times 3 is 9 pi over 16 times h. At, now we can use at the when the time the h is 4 feet squared dh dt. So I'm going to divide by this, and the 4 squared cancels the 16, and the feet squared will cancel two of the feet in the cube, so it'll be just uh, cubic foot. And so I'm going to have 3 divided by 9 pi uh, feet per minute which is going to be my d, h, d, t. And the 9 and the 3 would reduce, so it's 1 over pi feet per minute is my answer for d, h, d, t. Okay, now we have two positive numbers, x and y, always multiply to be 6, so x times y equals 6. That t be the total of, so we've got to add totals from an add problem. Let t be the total of twice the first. So I'm making x my first. plus the square of the second. That y would be the second. Find a pair xy that minimizes the total t. Well, I want to take the derivative of t and set it equal to zero. But I need to replace. And so I can either solve for x or solve for y. Either one is going to be 6 over x or 6 over y. I'll let, um, let me solve for x. I think that would be, I wouldn't have to square it then. So um, x is 6 over y. Divide both sides by y. And so I'm going to get t is equal to 2 times 6 over y plus y squared. Now I could have put 6 over x is y and squared that and put that there. Either way. So this is 12y to the minus 1 plus y squared. That's what t is. So t prime would be negative uh, 12y to the negative 2 plus 2 y. And now I'm going to set this equal to 0 and since this is negative this would have to equal that so I got 2y has to equal 12 over y squared. That's what this is. Adding it to the other side. If this was equal to 0 add this to the other side and I get this. I'm going to multiply both sides by y squared and divide by 2.
the 2 is just because that would reduce this and divide, reduce this. So I'm going to get y to the third equals 6. So y has to equal the cubed root of 6. And so x would be 6 divided by the cubed root of 6. And so my pair of numbers are 6 over the cube root of 6 for x and cube root of 6 for y. Okay. Le Hapital's rule, in case you've forgotten, if the numerator and denominator are either both at zero or both infinity, positive or negative infinity, at this value, then we can use the rule. And the rule says that we take the limit of this limit, the limit of this divided by this as x goes to that value, is the same as the limit of just the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator divided. So, first we need to check and see what they go to. So, x squared minus 1, as x goes to 1, goes to 0, because 1 squared minus 1 is 0. So, if the denominator goes to 0, we can use Le Hapital's rule. If we put 1 in there, ln of 1 is 0. So they both go to 0. So rule applies. So it's appropriate. So we can go to, still haven't taken the limit, but we can do whatever this limit is. It's going to be equal to the limit of the derivative of that, which is 2x, and the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. And just doing some algebra on this, this would be the limit as x approaches 1 of multiplying by x numerator and denominator, and I get 2x squared over 1. Now, can I put in 1? Do I have both of them become 0 or both become infinity? Well, they just become 2 over 1, which so I can take the limit. I can put in the 1. It comes out to be 2. And so there's my limit. And I have to be careful to make sure that the rule applies before I start doing anything. And i got to remember to put my limits in. That's page 3. Page 4. So we have this. We've got to take the derivative. So f prime is going to equal 3 times 9 is 27x squared plus 1 over x. Taking the derivative again, that would be 54x. And this is the same as x to the minus 1. So if I take the derivative, it's minus x to the minus 2, which can be written as 54x minus 1 over x squared. Okay, so to find local max and local mins, we set the first derivative equal to 0. And i got to show how I'm going to do that, so I'm going to go 27x squared plus 1 over x equals 0. Multiply everything by x, and I get 27x cubed plus 1 equals 0. So x to the third equals minus 1 divided by 27. Taking the cube root, and there's only 1, it's x equal minus one third. Now I have to find out whether it's a local max or local min by using calculus techniques. One would be to plug something before that into the derivative and see if the po it's got a positive slope. And after, see if it's got a negative slope, which would mean it's a maximum, or vice versa. 
or if it's positive on both sides, then it's that special point where it just goes flat. Like if it was positive and then positive, that would be that special one and not a maximum. Or if it was negative and negative. Or we could plug it into the second derivative and see whether it's concaved up or down. I'm going to choose to do that. So I'm going to find f double prime of negative one third. So that would be 54 times 1 third minus 1 over 1 over 3 squared. So this would be 1 ninth, and the reciprocal 1 ninth would be 9. And this would be a third of 54 is, see, 54 is 2 times 27, so if I divide by 3, that's 19, that's 18 minus 9, which is plus 9. Plus 9 tells me, in the second derivative, it says the curvature is positive. So, this tells me it's a minimum. Show how to use calculus to find any inflection points and determine these points. And we were supposed to do points, so I better finish this. I got to put one third back into the original one to find the point. So I, I missed that. The points, local maximum minimum, or minimum points. So we have one third and, oh, minus one third. Oh, minus one third. So that would be minus there, and one, minus one-third squared would be this. This is negative, negative 27, so it's a max. Ooh, better be careful of my signs. We've got negative one-third. Okay, so if I plug negative one-third in here, that would be one-ninth, so that's three. No, into the original functions. Uh, F of negative one third would be nine times one third cubed plus L N negative one third, which unfortunately does not exist. This graph does not exist for the negative one third. Third, so there is no max or min. Let's confirm that. Make sure I'm not making a mistake here. So I'm going to go to y equal clear and type in 9x to the third plus ln x. And so there we have the graph. And it doesn't look like it has a max or min. There's no bottom or peak, no local max or mids. Show how to use calculus to find any inflection points. Does this change curvature? It might. Let's, I'm going to go zoom for. I don't know. Yeah, that was zoom for. Inflection points, we set the second derivative equal to zero. So we'd have 54x minus 1 over x squared equals zero, which means 54x equals 1 over x squared, at, uh, adding 1 over x squared to both sides. Multiply by... Um, x squared, and I get 54x to the third equals 1. And so if I divide by 54, and then take the cube root, I get uh, x is e equal to the cube root of 1 54th, which is... Uh, 1 divided by 54 to the 1 third. 
at 0 .02, 0 .264, and then I would have to put that into the original function, and I have that here, so I can just uh, go second quit, vars, y variables, y1, with 0.264 in it, and I get the y coordinate is negative 1.166. Or I could have gone to the table and put in 0.264, and I would have got negative 1.166. And this would be an inflection point. Let's look at that inflection point. So let's go to the graph and let's zoom in. So it looks like it's curved up. Let's, um, and we're supposed to look at point two something and negative one point something. So I'm going to look down lower here. And we can see it comes up, makes a little bit of squiggle, and then goes up. So there's an inflection point right about there. So it's curved down, then curved up. Determine the intervals where F is increasing and decreasing. Show how calculus can give you this information. Well, if we set the first derivative equal to zero, then we know that it's either increasing or decreasing on either side of that. But the first derivative is 0 at negative 1 third, which is not a valid domain element, and the rest of it's all positive. Let's just check. This doesn't exist except for greater than 0. So we have the interval, not including 0, to infinity, and to see if it's increasing or decreasing, we're going to plug something in this range into the first uh, into the func into the first derivative to check the slope so f i'm going to do f prime of 1 if i put 1 in here i get 27 plus 1 over 1 which is 1 28 which is greater than 0 it's positive so the function is increasing and since there's no other max or mins, it's always increasing in that area, which we could see on the calculator. But I have to show some calculus here. Show how calculus can give this. Determine the interval where f of x is concaved up or down. Well, we have the inflection point, and we know that's where the curvature is changing because that's when it's equal to zero. So, and from the graph we saw we can go from zero, but not including zero, up to 0 0.264. And then we can go from 0 0.264, this is where it changes, and from beyond, it's curved the other way. Now to check the curvature, showing calculus, we pick something in this range and put it into the second derivative. So I'm going to find f double prime of 0 0.1. That's somewhere between these two. Put it into the second derivative, so I'm going to get 54 times 0 0.1 minus 1 over, I'm using this up here, 0 0.1 squared. Now, this is 5.4. This is squared, and the question is, is it bigger or smaller than this? Because we're subtracting it. Well, if you take 0.1, 1 tenth, and square it, you get 1 one hundredth, and 1 divided by 1 hundredth is 100. You can type it in your calculator. And this is less than 0, so it's concave down. It's negative, so it's concave down. 
Now here we got to put anything bigger than 0.2, so we're going to put in 1. F double prime of 1. At least I'm going to. You can do anything bigger than this, like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I just think 1 would be easy. Putting it again in here, and I'm going to get 54 times 1 minus 1 over 1 squared, which is 53, which is greater than 0, so it's concaved up. Determine any places where f of x is not differentiable. Well, it's not differentiable where it's not defined, so places where it's not differentiable is from negative infinity to 0, including 0, because it's not defined. Oop, not a dot there. D E F I N D D. Okay, that was page four, page five. We got a sheet of cardboard three feet by four feet. Classic problem going to cut squares out of the corners. We've done this several times in class. And if we're going to fold it after we cut the squares, we'll fold it there. So this will be a side, this will be a side, this will be a side, this will be a side. And so we don't know how big a square to cut out of the corners, so we'll call it x by x. So what size squares should be uh, what size should the squares be to maximize? So we're going to figure out x. Show how to solve this using calculus. And you can do it with um, pre-calculus mathematics, but for calculus. So the volume of the box, b maximum, will be length times width times height. The length I see as 4 minus an x minus an x. 4 minus 2x. The width will be 3 minus an x and minus an x. And the height will be x. We'll go straight up by the amount we have to fold up. So that's 12 minus 8x minus 6x plus 4x squared times x. So we get 4x to the third minus 14x times x minus 14x squared plus 12x. There's the formula for the volume. So now we take the derivative, which is 12x squared minus 28x plus 12. And looks like 4 would factor out of this. 3x squared minus 7x plus 3. And does that factor? I don't think so. So I would be left if doing the quadratic formula or simply we're trying to find out when this equals 0. So I'm just going to go, the 4 can't be, so I'm going to type in 3, whatever is it, 3x squared minus 7x plus 3. Graph. Oop, on. Zoom 4. And there are my two answers, right there and right there for the x, the size of the corners. Second, calculate uh, the 0 between 0 and 1. 0, enter, 1, enter, 0.5 is my guess. And it says uh, x could be 
zero point five six five seven or x could be between one uh, one and two second calculate the zero between one enter two enter put in one point oop 1.5 and it says nope 1.7676 rounded feet well if this is three feet we can't cut 1.7 out of each side because it's only could biggest we could do is 1.5 so this is not a valid answer and so there's the size of the square now could have also, since we programmed the quadratic formula, we could have put in A as 12, B as negative 28, and C as 12, and we would have got the 1.767 and the 0.5657. Or we could have worked out the quadratic formula longhand. All right, final problem. Sketch the curve that has these characteristics. It is defined and differentiable on the interval from minus 6 to 6. It's defined and differentiable. Has two points where the first derivative is equal to 0. So it has a slope of 0, 1 at x equal 2, at 2 it's got a slope of 0, and at 1 at minus 2, f prime equals 0. It has a y-intercept of 0 minus 2, so i got to put it got to go through this place and has one x-intercept at 4. There may be others, but those are two for sure. The second derivative is negative, so from negative 2 to 0, from here to there, f double prime is less than zero. It's concave down. It is positive from negative six to negative two. Concaved up. Just making myself notes. And on uh, zero to 4, it's also positive, so it's concaved up. Which means if it's concaved up, and it's got a 0 here, a slope of 0, that means that must be a minimum. And is 0 on 4? Four to six, ooh. So it's not concaved. No curvature at the end. It's got to be a straight. The first derivative is positive from two to six. From two to six. Okay, from, I'm going to write it down here. Can you see that? Yes. F prime is greater than zero, so it's got to be increasing. Otherwise, negative or zero. So the rest of it's decreasing or zero. F prime is negative or zero, so it's decreasing. or flat. The curve has an absolute minimum. 
that is also a local minimum. Yeah, I think that's got to be between here and here because it has a slope of zero and it's concaved up. So, so that would be the lowest place on the whole graph. It, uh, but the absolute max is not a local maximum. So that means at one end, it's got to be highest place. There are no local maximums. Okay, so I can, I'll just draw this like this. Concaved up, slope, oop, didn't get the zero, zero slope in the middle here. Concaved up, zero slope here, then hits four, and then there's no curvature, so it's just going to go straight. And it can't be a cusp because it wouldn't be differentiable, and it has to be differentiable. And these are solid ends, so that could be the absolute max. Now we want to be decreasing over here and not have a, a there's no local maximum. And it has to be concaved up, and then slope of zero, and then concave down. So concave down, slope of zero, concaved up. Has the absolute max, has a local min, that's also the global min, and I think all the other things are based. It's always decreasing or zero going to here. It's always increasing and concave down and then concaved up here and concaved up there and no curvature there. So this is something that would work. Okay.